tell me something, just stay home. There's something in the air this summer night that doesn't feel right. I end up going against my intuition, and I'm walking with Auntie John's dog, whose name was Nina Pitbull. And we're walking down the street, and these two guys are coming towards us. One is on a bike, and they're just looking like trouble. Right. And they pulled out hammers, like sledgehammers. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, you're looking at me crazy. And it was like, the dog saved our asses. Ah. The dog went on his back. And like, so probably the most, probably the most um, influenced or influential neighborhood in New York is probably this, where you're from, East Side. Now you say there's a difference east side and Alphabet City is two different neighborhoods, really, right? I believe so. A yeah. lot of people who just came in call it Alphabet City because it sounds really cool. Yeah. But I always consider Alphabet City from Avenue. Actually, I've always considered like B, C, and D, not so much A, but I guess it makes sense for A to be included in that. Yeah, of course it does. But yeah, you feel like A was more like already gentrified when you were a kid. Exactly. Yeah. So Avenue A, it was so crazy. Within a two blocks or two block radius, it changed so much. Avenue A had the punk rockers, the squatters. Yep. I always questioned those squatters. I was like, are they really in need of money? <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like I, trust fund kids that decided to squat. Yeah, I felt like at any moment they'll pull out a black car. Like, this is getting too rough. Get out of here. It's too much rain. Yeah, but um, when I lived, I lived over there on 10th Street, A and B. And when I lived there, you wouldn't walk past Sixth Street. Even on Avenue A. Wow. And what was that? It was like a drug war? It's like 81, 82. Yeah, I guess it was drug. Well, Avenue B was all, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. Heroin. Drug and, where, and where'd you grow up? Right around here? Yeah. So I grew up in Baruch Projects. Yeah. And at the age of 10, my mother was part of a home studying program where they, they actually helped physically gut the buildings. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then you had a, a share in it. Yeah. And she did that for seven long years. Wow. Yes, I used to actually help her fill up buckets and, you know. So you were doing, like, construction. <laughs> at like age of six. At age six. <laughs> but that's amazing. So the home study program was like, they give out they give out buildings to people, but you have to fix it yourself. Correct. So it's almost like these abandoned buildings, and then, like, you five people can have it, but you got to build it from, yeah, and you gotta from be, rubble. Right, right. And at the time, so that was, like, seven long years. And I even remember <laughs> my mom... Uh, she would do security in the buildings. At that time, we had a Rottweiler. Yeah, yeah. So she used to sleep in the building. And people would break in, try to steal, steal tools and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, of course, all the tools were so expensive. And still copper. Yeah. Right? Copper was very expensive. Right. And they, they, you know, they were exposed to asbestos and all that stuff. So it was like, you really had to work for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as long as you were a native Lower East Sider, or, or you've been in New York in this area for X amount of years, you had the opportunity to take advantage of that right, program. Right, right, right. So yeah, I grew up on uh, Baruch. My mother started the home study program. By the age of like 10, that's when we moved into 3rd Street between A and B. Wow, so 3rd Street, A and B, I know that block. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so now we moved into an area where it was a little more diverse, sure. but the drugs were very blatant. Yeah. Growing up in, in Baruch, it was a little more, I think, it wasn't, this, it wasn't as blatant, out, right. you know, but out here. Well, it was a lot more families and a lot more, it was a lot more, a lot of people in one place. Exactly, exactly. So they couldn't just do that because there would be an uprising. But right. do you remember this park when you were little? Yeah, Topkin Square Park. I, so this is a famous, famous park. This is, yeah. I mean, this place has a lot of history. When I was a kid walking through here though, it was all tents and homeless people. Wow. And you had like a little walkway. It was like a maze. <laughs> And you'll walk through it. it and they owned the park. It was their park. That's In how the 90s? You know. I would say, yeah, early 90s. 2000s, yeah. It was early 90s, yeah, to mid-90s. So when I, li when, I used to, when I lived over there on 10th Street, that, that could be my building, that red brick building. We come to this park. It was all junkies. It was all heroin, but it was out in the open. Like you said, it was open air. And people were just like, you see a few still on the bench. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was pretty wild back then. Like yeah. 81, 82. And if you went to Avenue B... You didn't go to Avenue B unless you were looking at a cop, unless you lived down there. Right. You had no other business there. And they had these famous after hours. There was an after hours on 2nd Street called, uh, what the hell was the name of it? Uh, uh, the World. I remember The World, of and, and that thing, that thing was open till like 12 noon. Yeah, <laughs> only after hours, what? Yeah, so that was wild. 
you know, unfortunately, a lot of stories that I share, I, I want to like pull back a little bit because they're always like tragedy yes. attached to it. Well, don't <laughs> pull back because I don't want you to, you know. Yeah, I don't want to start crying on this episode. Yeah, well, you can. It doesn't matter. But I mean, um, yeah, the world, I remember only after I was, there was also 7B was a famous place, but uh-huh. that, was in the, that was in the late 80s. And um, there was a place called Zodiac, but that was on the more west side. But yeah, this whole neighborhood was crazy. Let's so, walk through here. I want to show you. Let's go to 9th Street real quick. So Tompkins Square Park in the 60s is when it became like a lot of junkies. The yippies started here. Mm-hmm. This was like the original hippie place. Like these are the people that, you know, were probably in the early 60s were like, hey, they didn't like Bob Dylan. They were like, Bob Dylan's a nerd. So when, they, they thought he was like a too co- hardcore. A, yeah. <laughs> Too hard for so even though he was like the symbol yeah. of like resistance and uprising, yeah. they thought of him like a commercial right. flake. Right, down here they were like, we don't go for that. That's hilarious. They were into like the fugs. Yeah. Yeah, so Night Street, I spent a lot of time on Night Street. I have friends who were in a group home and it was ran by a guy named Father Pat. Right. And I shared a couple of meals there. They were cool guys. I met them through a guy named Antique John. That's what we called him because he sold antiques out of a storefront that he probably wasn't paying rent on. Right, right. <laughs> he was awesome though. He would uh, give us a stack of flies and we would you know, hand out the flies and he'll give us five bucks at the end of the day, maybe a warm beer. Father Pat. And no, that, that was Antique John. And then Antique John introduced me to all the guys on, uh, on 9th Street and Father Pat owned the building and took care of a lot of kids there. And he was, Mahoney was his name? Was yes, that? yes, Patrick Mahoney, Father Patrick Mahoney. And he was involved in one of the most famous capers of all time. Yeah, right. With the, uh, the Brinks truck robbery in Rochester. And supposedly this guy, this is all like, you know, well, it was IRA guy came over here, knew Father Pat, because Father Pat was involved, you know. Like any good Irish priest, he was involved with funneling money to our people in the north. And then, um, and then they got involved with this thing, and it was a, a lot of things happened. I, I knew one of the guys, and um, you know I didn't know him well, but I'd met him a few times. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's a pretty wild story because it's like it's a, a modern, it's a modern like Robin Hood theory that's sort, right, sort that's of right. thing. Yeah. And the money was never recovered. That's money wild. Money was never recovered. <laughs> the money it, could be, it could be buried here. Well, the guy that that wrote he wrote a book about it. I read his book once. The guy that went to Ireland, back to Ireland, and of course he denies any of it. You know, yeah. but I mean, but he. And let me tell you something about Father Pat, man. Yeah. He didn't crack. He didn't sing like a bird. No, he, he did his time. Yeah, he did. Somebody in the street, and this wasn't me calling, but someone was like, man, where's Gangsta Pat at? Where's Gangsta Pat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing but good things to say about him, man. He's always been a gentleman to me. And, That's great. And he took care of a lot of the kids around here. That's great. You know, and these kids were from different parts of New York City. Right. The Bronx, you know, you know, Stan. They always hooked them up, yeah. Yeah. And so the Tompkins Square riots, what was that, 91? I believe so. And I didn't I was riots. Yeah. Right? Right. Right. And that was wild. It was wild. So they had, uh, they had been here for years. And I want to say there was like a turn in office, right? Maybe it was Dinkins in at that time? And then when Giuliani? Was in. Dinkins was in. I think it was before Giuliani. I think it was it when was, Dinkins came in. Yeah. Koch was in and Dinkins came in. Yeah. So there was something in regards to that right? that really catapulted the change here. But man, it was just full of tents and it, it, was, uh, it, it wasn't anything like this. This is... Yeah, know. no, it was, a wild, it was a wild thing, yeah. yeah. That's what it was. They were trying to take the tents down and make the park livable and people went crazy. Yeah. And for a long time after that, there was buildings that were inhabited. There were, you know, just squatters living there. Well, yeah, this was the first real big squatters neighborhood I remember you know even as a, a kid in the old days I knew people who went to La Salle and people from this hang out in this neighborhood and this was a lot of squat down here Avenue B where it's is right now this was wild and yeah. C was wilder and D was wilder yeah yeah see so all you know a lot of you know all this has been, become gentrified right so the rent here is dirtbag expensive. It's like not livable. Like it's you know, crazy. It's crazy. It's like these trees it's all, weren't here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they needed these trees back there. Yeah. So all uh-huh. a lot of native New Yorkers 
all on D. Those are all, you know, no one's transplanted over there in the Aye. projects, you know. And they're pushed to, into the water. That's why they all have a, aquatic <laughs> do-rags and bandanas and footwear, because they're going to be in the water. Uh. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, yeah, it's, 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 this is thriving with restaurants, uh, hookah bars, even yoga see, studios. Even see? Yeah. Even hey, see yeah, too? Yeah, and we can walk through there. You'll see that. That's it's crazy. peppered in. Wow. It's peppered in, yeah. So I still train people out here. You I do? Yeah, I'll do, I'll do a sessions. And you see that, uh, that area right in the corner of the, the courts where there's uh, yeah. bags or recyclables and stuff? Yeah. That's the guy I will have to fight for my spot. That's really? why I train people. That's, that's the guy you think. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, so if I'm training someone, I'm like, that's your sparring partner today. We got to get our spot back. <laughs> And you train people right in here? Yeah, right under an oak tree for $150 an hour. <laughs> you got to take advantage. Right, that's right. See, right there, that's, I think that's the building I lived in. I lived in like the fifth one off the corner. Wow. Walk up. Yeah. Oh, your cab muscles must have looked beautiful. Oh, my God. I, I, was, I looked beautiful in general. I was 22. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've got, laundry, bringing up. You don't think about those I've things. I've got pictures, you know. I've still got pictures if you're interested. We can put them up here somewhere. Shirtless really pictures. I should, I should do like an OnlyFans of me at 22. I think it would do well. I mean, it's kind of similar. It's similar now. I think since COVID, it's, it's brought back a lot of the grittiness. So people are blatantly using drugs and yeah, peddling drugs. Yeah, so it brought back that grittiness. Um, but. There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, money here, so you're gonna get a mix of people who have money, who live in the area, who frequent the park. No one was having picnics here. They'll still have picnics here. No. Yeah, they no one's having picnics now? Yeah, they, yeah. Well, I'm sure if we walk by the grass, there's gonna be a picnic. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. There was a lot more rats in those days, too. Uh -huh. This park was rat infested when I played ball. But isn't it crazy? That was a, a, an operating pool. There's a pool right there. That's wild. Yeah. The last time I've seen it, in use, it was definitely people hanging out all night, just coming down off of Molly or something. Yes. And, I, and I say Molly because they were so polite. After they drank and, 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 and skinny dip, they picked up after themselves. I was like, that's a gentleman's drug, that's Molly. That's, that's not a gentleman's drug. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the other thing. You grew, up, you grew up fast being around. I mean, all kids in Manhattan grew up fast, you know what I mean? But you guys grew up really fast down here because you saw 50 different cultures all the time. Mm -hmm. Probably all the rock stars down here too. You know, yeah, they all sure. lived down here in the 90s. Everybody lived down here. So where did you go to like high school, junior high school? So I went to uh, junior high school 56. Where's that? And that's uh, like and what they consider the hill. Yeah. That's near, closer to Chinatown. Right. And the uh, Sewer Park High School, which is off Sewer of Delancey. Sewer Park, yeah. Yeah. Legendary. Mm-hmm. Sewer Park. The, uh, and that's where, down by, um, right off the uh, FDR? Correct, yeah, right. So right, uh, right on Delancey. Yeah. I mean, that's a But that's man, this, a, this brings back memory. So when my friend Antique John worked here, so he was 10 years older than us, right? right. So he was just, a, uh, he, he had this, uh, such a hustling mentality. He would get things from the street, polish them up, but he knew how to display them. Right. And he knew what music to play. So anybody who was new to the neighborhood was like, oh my God, this feels, Authentic. So, yeah, authentic. And he would have chandeliers for sale and oh. little tables. And, and, he, and he, would, he would play music on like a boombox or on a speaker? He had like an old school record player. Yeah. He knew how to do it. <laughs> and he played music to just get people in the mood to spend yeah, money? Yeah, and it would be right here. Oh, so great. it would be tables, uh, you know, uh, yeah. wine, wine for sale. And I would run to the corner store, I was like 11 years old, to get a case of beer. They were selling to you, you know. It's like, oh, I'm doing yeah. it for my, my buddy who yeah. runs an antique shop. Yeah. But we used great. to hang out on this stoop right here. Now, this was, a, but this was a hot block. There was a lot of dope yeah. being peddled out of here. It was, right? Yeah, it was bad. And unfortunately, Antique John had a son who, a stepson, and he came from the Bronx to visit me one night. And you know when you just have bad intuition, you, don't, you, yes. listen, you listen to that shit. I was just about to leave my apartment, this is when I lived in Grand Street, and I had a little boom box with me, and someone told me, just stay home, there's something in the air this summer night that doesn't feel right. I end up going against my intuition, and I'm walking with Antique John's dog, whose name was Nina Pitbull, 
and we're walking down the street and these two guys are coming towards us. One is on a bike and they're just looking like trouble. Right. And they pulled out hammers, like sledgehammers. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, you looking at me crazy? And it was like, the dog saved our asses. Ah. The dog went on his back hind leg and they backed off. Those were like known gang members in the area. Later that evening, uh, Antique John's son had a running with them. I wasn't around and they stabbed him 12 times. He wow. lived wow. in Topkin Square Park. Yeah, over nothing, over like a look. You well, know? like you said, they were looking for you first, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were, um, it was wild because I remember seeing them, they passed by us right over here, and there was at least 30 of them. And they Jeez. ranged from the age of like 45 yes. to like 12. And I remember the look in a 12 year old's eye, he looked mischievous, but there was a girl who was like in her late teens, and she looked like she didn't want to be there. Right. She was just kind of like, I guess. Yeah. But there was like 30 of them and they had crowbars. It was like something out of Double Dragon on Streets of Rage. Like, you don't see this like no. in person. I mean, that, yeah. was like, that was a big thing with multi-age gangs was in the 70s. Yeah, right? man. So I'd never seen, that was my first That's like crazy. time experiencing that. So that was wild. Oh my God, it's horrible, yeah. And you knew something in the air when you went out that night. That's your other interesting thing. smell it, right? man. You could feel it. And these stores were all just like, uh, no stores here. No stores here. Look at this. I mean, I don't even know what these people are selling. <laughs> these are all the buildings. What's that now? I don't even know what these people are selling half the time. Right. I, don't know, I don't know what's for sale. I don't know what that is. It's always like three things. Yeah. <laughs> right. And this is a thousand dollars. Right. The cool thing about this area, though, they have lots of community gardens. Yes, they always did have that. You know, it's a, you know, it's a crazy movie that you probably saw from the 80s in the Lower East Side, which is how it really looked, Mixed Blood. You ever see that? Mixed Blood. It sounds familiar. I may have seen it. It's really, it's a, it's a movie movie, but it's really good. But anyway, they have a lot of shots down here, and it's like, it was like the South Bronx. I mean, this place was all rubble back in the day. Yeah. When I was, we would walk down here once in a while, you know, just to get weed or whatever. It was all abandoned buildings. Like none of this was here. There would be a couple of community gardens. Right. And that was it. The rest of it was all rubble. Yeah, and then the only place that could replicate that later on was Harlem and the Bronx, and yep. that's how they got fixed up. But yeah, every other building here was vacant. Yeah. And just run down. There were shooting galleries. Yeah. And they were run by gangs. So look at this nice community garden where yeah. I'll probably have a poetry reading. Oh my God. Or me doing stand-up when I'm not booked. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, this would be a good place to shoot a special. Yeah, look at that. So cool. Look at that. And when you were a kid, did you play, did you guys play stickball and stuff or no? We, That's for my time. I played I stickball. Stop playing. Yeah. Stickball wasn't as po popular as, um, we played it. We played uh, a lot of um, what's that game? Uh, hot piece and butter. Yeah, so hot you piece and butter. You would hide a belt. It was just an excuse to whip your friend's ass. Yes. Oh, it was violent. Yeah. And some kids used the the, the bed end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hot piece and butter. You hit a belt. So let's say there's a crew of four of us here, and within this one block radius, we'll hide a belt. You play right and, now. Yeah. <laughs> And we close our eyes, and if you're close to the, look, if you're looking for the belt, we say you're hot, you're hot, you're hot. So I'll hide, I'll hide the belt, you guys keep walking. <laughs> and then you come back. Okay. <laughs> I hid the belt along here. Whoever finds the belt, if you're between him and home base, let's say home base is the box on the corner, the green box. If somebody catches you, they whip you with the belt until you get home. And I just keep going warm, warm, I think, right? Yeah, warm. Yeah. Oh, okay. you're hot. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Ready? Here we go. I know where it's hidden. Oh, actually, we have to be careful because you <laughs> Wait, know my. You, you hit the belt already? I hit the belt. <laughs> Coda. Okay. Uh, cold, 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 cold. Oh! So this is the, this is the technique. You know where the belt is at? Yes. Right? Oh and, boy. And, and people are saying, "Oh, you're hot, Sergeant. You're hot." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, get his ass the medal. Because of E. 
if he, if I wasn't on home base, he would beat me with the belt until you get to home base. Right? Yeah, man. It was Hot a piece of butter. That's when you find the belt. Bang! Ah! The legs be all well. Because there was always the one bully kid that played that loved to play, always wanted to play hot peas and butter. Yeah. And he used it <laughs> to just beat people senseless. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. The that bullies loved that game. They probably invented it. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was exciting. It was fun that the adrenaline would get going. Yeah. Oh man, it was uh, hot peas and butter. But your legs would be all bruised. And I think my favorite street game though was playing with the with the fire hydrants. So the pumps, yeah. would, the pumps would just be spewing water spsh, in the middle of the street. And what you would do is you would take a, a, a empty like Goya can, <laughs> Goya. Yeah, and you would open up both sides and put it on top of the uh, yeah. the nozzle of the pump, and you would spray the water on cars. Even if they didn't want it. Especially. <laughs> and did you play a lot of uh, sports growing up? Yeah, I played, I was in a Pee Wee League, a Little League in baseball. There was a yeah. Lady of Sorrows, which is a Catholic school who did, uh, who had some, t uh, a league. Is that and a second boys club. Yeah. Boys club, we are, they have, they have baseball teams. And where was that, on Henry Street? We have two of them. We have one on 10th Street, which is now closed. Right. Actually, both of them are closed, and then Pitt Street. Right, Pitt Street. And that's the one I went to, on huh? Pitt Street. And yo, it was so funny because if you were under the age of 10, you were considered a midget. That's right. what they put on your car, a midget. Midget league, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I the, forgot about that. <laughs> you're not allowed to say that shit anymore. Midget league. I was a midget. Right? I forgot about that. And I, and I had a midget card in boys club. Wow. And the, I ten above was junior, then it was intermediate, yes. and then it was senior. Yep. But boys club, man, was awesome because you know how you did uh, woodwork in there? You boxed in there? That's what you used to box boys yeah, club, right? Did, yeah. So, and this, uh, is the last, this is the last of it, really. Right, these stores right here. Mm -hmm. The last of the old, uh, your old neighborhood. Yeah, so this spot has been around for a long time. Yeah. All the winos are here on a Friday. Can't wait to cash their check. <laughs> <laughs> and did you ever go, did you go to other neighborhoods growing up or no? For the most part, I stood around here. Yeah. You visit other neighbors when you uh, travel with your baseball team. Right. And that never felt good. No, at least you had the bats, <laughs> but yeah. It's so funny, I just saw like 10 kids on the train in baseball uniforms with the bats. And I knew they were going somewhere and they had, they had a little nervous look. The Loseda uh, Festival here, very Puerto Rican, they have that every summer. And everybody comes back from like, you know. All the, all the neighborhood Upstate New York, I mean, right, everybody right. moved to like, you know, um, what do you call it, like Monroe and um, Middletown and stuff like that, come yeah. back, Jersey, Florida. Yeah, this place is heavy with Puerto Ricans. And you know, a lot of them have moved. It's funny because you're right, a lot of them have moved to like Middletown. Yeah. <laughs> Westchester. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it was all Puerto Ricans. I mean, even when I lived down, when I lived on 10th Street, it was all Puerto Ricans, except our building, I think. Now, I remember I was here in the 80s, so it was like, that was, uh, all the bands were just moving here, but anybody down here, it's so funny because it seems, you know, relatively back in those days, even in the daytime, anybody here was copping heroin. That was it. Yeah. Not even dope, not even weed, not even coke, heroin. That was it. That was the biggest, yeah, uh, heroin hub. In the, in the, in the probably in the world. In the world, yeah. For down buying. here. Yeah. I mean, there were stories of, uh, I mean, that went on from the 80s to, to the 90s even. That's right. Yeah, right. I mean, there was a big drug bust right up the block. I mean, it was a multi-million dollar drug bust. Yeah. And helicopters were ensued, and it, it was wild. Yeah, no, this neighborhood was wild. Yeah. From 19, this was the first, you could argue it was one of the first wild neighborhoods that was mixed. Because from 1960, 62 to 1995 or something, it was heroin. Yeah. It was wild. And they had names for the drugs. Uh, one, one block will be selling one called DMW, which is Dead Man Walking. <laughs> and, and, and that's what they want. They want anything that was that, that, closest to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People wanted that. The, the, that the closest feeling. to death you wanted. Scarlet bone, claws, bone. bones. Yeah, on there. yeah. Everybody loved that, yeah. Yep. No, that was it. That was wild. It was wild. Yeah, but so, there was a huge drug bust in the, in the, in the, in the 90s. 
and they they cleaned up this whole they, they yeah, shut yeah, down yeah, like yeah, two yeah. enterprises and um you know some of those guys are still in jail i mean it's sure. like 30 years ago right so you know it, it, all this stuff brings up memories because it, that was the means of income a lot of the the kids that i grew up with sure you know their, bro their big brothers sold and and that was the thing to do i would see classmates on the corner early morning doing street sales hiding their dope under you know uh under cars yeah and they were just hand-to-hand -hand sales well you're lucky you never got into it you know nah oh i used to work for that company you did hey drop it a real good one. plumber a real good plumber They're from this south bronx huh yeah and when i was with them they were breaking the law and apparently they still are <laughs> 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 the owner, uh, Paul Shea, he was awesome, man. He was very much a vein into the, like, the, 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 the community, man. He gave opportunities to, to everybody, and he was a good dude. Now, this place was here a long time, and they used to have one on First Avenue, I mean, on Avenue Way, because I used to go to one on Avenue Way back in 81. What, the shop, shop fair? fair? Yeah. I remember Pioneer. Pioneer, that yeah. Was Pioneer. Oh man, you know, that feeling of getting, losing your mom in one of those supermarkets, <laughs> stomach turning. <laughs> <laughs> I know it looked so little now. You, you it was so big then, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I was too busy looking at the cereal boxes. Here, yeah, there's the old look. Oh uh, yeah, open condom. Used to be a lot of hookers back in the day. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, what else is interesting is if you really look at New York, people, every group came here, lived in this neighborhood. Everybody lived in these buildings, yeah. starting with in the 1880s. Everybody lived on these blocks, everybody. Right. Every generation that came in was from the Lower East Side. Yeah, I mean, you had a, a strong influx of Jewish people, the Jews, Irish, Irish, Italian, Italians, and Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. And then after that, that was probably the last immigrant group that came over. But after that, it's been all gentrified, whatever. But before that, yeah, it was famous for that. Everybody moved here. The, that building well, probably- which, which one do you think was the last group to come in? What's that? Which one do you think was the last group? The was last it? group to this neighborhood or yeah. just- Yeah, this was Lower East Side. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Right? I mean, that was it. Yeah. Because everybody else moved to different neighborhoods, I right. guess. But down I mean, here, no, not really. Yeah, there wasn't like a, a strong a Mexican influence. No. That was more like uptown. Yeah, Mexicans and, were and more Brooklyn. like, they moved into, yeah, Brooklyn and, and Queens and the Bronx. And there's still, I mean, Corona, Corona's all Mexican and South Bronx, a lot of Mexican. So and the, uh, Sunset the Park. Famous here it New, is. New Rican Cafe. Legendary. One of the founders was M Miguel Pinero. Yep. Short Eyes. Remember Short Eyes? Ever yeah. seen the movie? Yeah. Unbelievable. And they did comedy down here back in the uh, 90s. Mm -hmm. I was here once. And they, and they fought, for, they, they really fought hard to stay here because um, oh, yeah. there's been many attempts to get rid of it. To get the building, yeah. To get the building, yeah. Yeah, they just had like, well, it started with Puerto Rican, like you said, Miguel Pineros is famous. He was a famous uh, Puerto Rican playwright and poet. And he's the one who really started that whole thing in the 70s. And I guess he started New York or he was the earliest star that they had here. Mm -hmm. And then um, it became like the place for poetry. And like I said, they did stand up comedy for a while. And I guess they just have play readings. And I don't know what else goes on, but that was, it was a definite neighborhood place for the Puerto Ricans in, uh, in this neighborhood for, through the 80s and 90s. And it's still here. Yeah, unfortunately, he was mixed up in all sorts of drugs and yeah, controversy. He was, well, he died, he, he OD'd. He OD'd, yeah. He was, a, he, was a, he was a junk, he was in jail. That's why he wrote Short Eyes. And when, his movie, came, and when his movie came out, he tried to scalp his own tickets <laughs> to the premiere. <laughs> That's some dirtbag shit. 
I mean, it's just what it is, man. I'm I not mean, trying, you know, that I'm is just... a real junkie. Yeah. Oh, no. He scalped his own tickets to his own premiere. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, he ended up ODing, on, I think, on a roof around here. Yeah, he was a heroin addict. Even in the movie, he talks about heroin. He, he gives, like, a couple of monologues about heroin that's a love story to heroin. That's what he's famous for, too. He's very poetic. But when he talk about heroin, he would go into this magical place where you'd be like, oh, the way he described it so beautiful. Yeah, it was like, yeah, to a him, romantic it was relationship. Yeah. yeah. And that's why, I guess, you, you knew it was going to end. And then the building's painted like the flag. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see that from across the street. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and this neighborhood was known for drugs. Well, all the famous William Burroughs was down here, another famous heroin addict, and um, uh, Jim Carroll, you know, Basketball Diaries, he moved down here. Basquiat? Bas yep, Basquiat. Like, like, yeah, Basquiat. Yeah, another one. Everybody was, everybody was legendary. Hey, how you doing? Everybody was legendary, hey, I guess, you know. Was down here, was uh, was into like dope, you know what I mean? Like, that's probably a legend. Probably knew everyone we just mentioned. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, there were all the bands that came down here. Everybody said vicious. Everybody was down here was was in it heavily. That guy, you just say hello, to, uh, hello to. Right. I hope he doesn't have a keen sense of hearing. But when I worked for a real good plumber, we used his building to store, you know, uh, no hub pipes and tools and stuff. And there was a back area that had a hole, and it was like mysterious to me. I was like, yo, I want to know what's in this area. Yeah. And I looked, and it was a cat cemetery. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that, yeah. He's a cat killer? <laughs> I don't know if he's a cat killer, but maybe he just mummifies them. Wow. And they were all in like, like, you know, uh, wow. storage bins. Storage bins that I would use to transfer, transfer my snakes, he was using to, wow. as coffins for the cats. It's you wild, know, right? He looks like a cat uh, cemetery uh, <laughs> caretaker. Hey, what about um, the other guy, the guy that, the cannibal was down here too, remember him? There was a cannibal out the here. The cannibal that ate his girlfriend was down right around here. I was like, anyway, no, we saw we pioneered all of that. <laughs> and Jeffrey Dahmer ain't got nothing on us. We started eating people first. I'll tell you his name, <laughs> Daniel Ratchkowski or something like oh, that. Oh, God. <laughs> I, 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 so I do remember, like, this all brings back, like, walking through this. And yeah. So, and so, so it was limited. Like, if you didn't go, if you weren't in boys club and stuff, you just got into bullshit. Like, we used to, when this, when it snowed and the, 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 the ground was frozen, me and my friends would hang on back of taxis so yeah. they could pull us. That was recreation yeah. for us. Or uh, sitting in back of UPS trucks. Right. Or on back of buses. Buses, yeah, yeah. I didn't do the bus so much, but the UPS truck, right. I like to sit. I'm more of a sitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sat oh, you sit in the back of Yeah, yeah. I, I, I panicked one time going up the block. And as I'm getting on to my friend, my friend was like, don't get up the block. And I jumped up. I did like a Rambo roll. Yeah. Keys fell apart. I think I lost a tooth. And my oh. friend, and it stopped at the end of the block. My friend just got up and goes, <laughs> <laughs> safe and sound. Meanwhile, Save I'm putting it. my face back together. Oh, my God. Yeah. But we did all sorts of stupid shit. One thing about this neighborhood that I, I remember, I met a, a group of mischievous kids. So we lived in these short buildings. We would throw beans on people's heads. Like, this, you know, get a package of be uh, a bag of beans and throw them on people's heads. <laughs> Eggs at people. Sure. Uh, put a plexiglass and hide snow on it so people could slip and fall. <laughs> Knocking doors and run. Pants and yeah, we. Oh, God. We didn't call it knock on doors and run. There was another name for it that I can't say on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I'm familiar with that term. <laughs> yeah, it was so dirtbag. Yeah, man, wow. But this is, you know, I grew up on this block where you got the church. Yeah. Now, is that Ukrainian church or Catholic? No, Catholic. What church is that? I'm not sure. Well, we'll find I out in a minute. Know. We haven't I only spent 20 Pietro. years on this block. We'll find out in a few seconds. Oh, and this is uh, the People's Bank, the Lower East Side Bank. Yeah. I got a, 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 a home equity loan. It only took me nine months to get approved by some girl I went to high school with <laughs> <laughs> who looked at me like I was a piece of shit. And she did she it. Said, huh? How do you get your money exactly? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, none of it is accounted for. You can't give me Venmo receipts right. or hamburger emojis. <laughs> <sighs> So this is the building where I grew up, Third Street. Wow. I wish I had pictures of before and after. So where Jane's Exchange is at, yeah. this is dirt and rubble. 
1990. And that's a building. And we moved in, in around 1994, 90. Five. And you guys built that up from scratch, right? Basically. So obviously, my mother wasn't a contractor, right? Like, right, right. Physically, right. and it was it was interesting because uh, it was a a lot of Asians, right? Um, my mother and maybe two others were the only Latinos, and wow. maybe a Greek family. And yeah, man, it's a small building. Wow, you guys just it was just. The outside was there, but the inside yeah, was rubble, right? Right. It had two columns. No two, electrical, no, no nothing. Electrical. It was just, it was just vacant. It was like every wow. floor. It was super dangerous to walk in, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Every, every other building. It was like one building was okay, and then it was like another yeah. vacant yeah. one with this dirt and rubble where junkies hung out. And That's wild, yeah. That's amazing, huh? And you guys built that up from scratch. Yeah, yeah. And you're just a little six-year-old carrying a little pail. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's powerful when you think so about I, it. Look I, at it know, today. Yeah, I mean, you know what's wild is like, so this, where you see the store for, for rent, yeah. my mother moves us out of the Baruch to give us a better opportunity, get us away from all the bullshit. Then this storefront was ran by a, a, a Dominican family, and they were very charming, and we really liked them, but they were involved in drugs. So they, they left, and they just allowed it to be a drug uh. then and people i would literally so i'm on 191 i would literally walk through a line of dope heads trying to cop from that store and my mother was so i remember my mother almost took a person because she knew this lady yeah and she's like oh this lady's pumping drugs out of here yeah. like how dare she you know and you know these junkies want to get a fix so don't go into the building right you know, they're not waiting they're yeah. not like, let me go home and do this behind closed doors right no, they would do it in between cars wow did you ever have to run from them as a kid? No, they, these guys just wanted to get high. Unless they needed a fix, they didn't have money. They weren't dangerous, but they, it was unsightly. Okay. Yeah. And they just lined up. They were just lined up for drugs at 6 o'clock in the morning. There's another building, same deal, a part of a home studying program. Oh, it was? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing when you think about how... Like, they'd, they'd give away these buildings for free, and then I guess the city would pay for the contract, whatever. I'm sure they had some professional contractors working, too. Right, right, absolutely. And so once supplies. it was gutted, then I guess, I'm not sure where that money came from. It'd be, it'd be interesting to find out yeah. how that was financed. Yeah. But yeah, my mother didn't put up sheetrock or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another, it's not even here anymore. But right where that tattoo right. shop was, there was an old social club. And there was just like guys like with the names of Seymour. You know, and Seymour always had a bad hip. He was just like this. And, and Howard. And they had a social club. And I've never seen such a thing. I've seen it like an old school TV. Right, like, right, right. And they had a social club smoke there, you know. And uh, yeah. And we would throw uh, stick bombs in the, the mail slot and run away. They, you know. My, my friend Charlie grew up, yeah, I, oh, so I got my real uh, taste of like racism too because it was so diverse and everyone that made fun of each other used race. Yeah. You know, so we had uh, Indian Delhi in the corner, then you had the Chinese restaurant, and the first family I met lived in this building, and they were like hillbillies, like the mother would walk out barefoot, yeah. and she would smoke cools, and be like, Charlie, get out the fucking gutters before I, I just strangle you, cocksucker. And like, turn off the cigarettes and be on barefoot. Wow. Yeah, she was like, raw. And so the, the way they interacted with like neighborhood merchants, it was like the most. Yeah. <laughs> it was the wildest shit. <laughs> you know, they used the, terms that I was like, oh my God. It was the last days of that. Yeah. Now nobody's, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, everything was, was used to, to, to describe the, the Indian deli, the Chinese yeah. restaurant. Yeah. I'll spare you the details. But right here, so they had a social club. And so I believe this was divided into two. Then there was a guy by the name of, his name was Mike. And the neighborhood people called him Psycho Mike. But he played the bagpipes beautifully. Even though the bagpipes always sound scary and sad, he'll play them. But the, the, the kick was he would do it with just uh, adult diapers. And he would walk up and down the street. Oh he was, my he was God. Left. So that was my first encounter with someone who was emotionally gone. Yes. Like, I mean, mentally disturbed. Yeah. And then, you know, at one point he put like fecal mat in the store for feathers in there and saying, God, we trust. And that's how everyone called him, Psycho Mike. So yeah, yeah, Psycho Mike. There was a guy named Chicken House John. 
Is this an antique John? Antique John, yep. Yeah, it was it a wild was. group of people. It was a wild neighborhood. And he 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 eventually succumbed to a drug over overdose. He yeah. was a nice guy when he was on his meds. He was very articulate, very smart. Claimed that he knew the Kennedys, you know that type of shit. Who knows? He might have. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty much. It's pretty amazing. I mean, that's what his neighborhood. His neighborhood had more flavor than any neighborhood because it was bohemian, but it was also street, but it was also drugs. Yeah. So and it was there was kind a big of, punk rock scene. What? And this, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like from one, you know. Block to the next, like on Avenue A, that's yeah. where you had the people with the pink hair, yep. the spiked hair, the leather jackets, yeah. the, the anarchist movement sort of thing. Yeah. Well, even when I lived here in the 80s, punk was just popping. I, I bartended at St. Mark's Bar and Grill on First Avenue. Oh, wow. and, do you know that place? Yeah. I was a bartender there. Damn. First Avenue and Avenue A. I mean, St. Mark's and, and First Avenue. And it was wild every night. It was just what you're describing because you'd be in there and then that, and Every night, almost typically every night you're there. First, it was a constant almost fight. And a lot of times it wasn't a fight, but it was, there were fights, but it was an almost fight. So first, six to seven, Hell's Angels. Then they leave Rastafarians. Then they leave neighborhood Puerto Ricans. Then they leave NYU kids. Then they leave Wild, punk right? rock. But there'd be a lot of overlap and yeah. you're like, well, I was bought that. I was like, oh, everybody like tried to move everybody away from each other. But it's everybody, so funny. But it was like a, just what you're describing in this neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, that right was, up the block was a Hells Angels yeah, the, the club was, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And if you walked uh, up that block with your music too loud, they would let you know. If you went near <laughs> their bikes, they would threaten you. Oh, yeah. If you oh, I don't forget the time, uh, you know, when I, was, uh, when I was doing plumbing, one of my, uh, the mechanics said something smart. He's like, I'm not doing that shit. And uh, Hell's Angel like owned the establishment, the whiskey ward. Right. And he jumped off the scaffold like, boom! His hair just like bounced off his shoulders. And he said, what you said to me? And I just screamed with a cigarette in his mouth. I was like, oh man. And the guy's like, no, no, you didn't let me finish. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing it until I can do it right. <laughs> so this is where, this yeah. is the, where Eddie lived and that's the, the house that he oh. lived, the, the, the apartment that he was killed in. In this one? Yeah, right there in the corner, right there, right above the awning. Oh, and this, right here, right yeah, here, yeah. yeah. So oh this is the God. entrance. And he, yeah. would, he would hit on you, like he was like perched on his window. He'd be like that, hey boys. <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would like, he would uh, guess what kind of dick I had. He would like, I bet you have a fat one. I was like, Jesus Christ. Eddie, Eddie, <laughs> it's the the afternoon. Yeah, I would clutch my pearls like that. Like, like, hey, it's the middle of the afternoon, Eddie. <laughs> the sun is still out, Eddie. Yeah. Get a grip. I'm glad you survived the neighborhood, man. Yeah. yeah, it really is a wild kaleidoscope, you know? Yeah, I mean, I remember just, rest, you know, you know when you're like 11, 12, you're always wrestling with your friends, right? Sure. And I was walking up here, uh, it was on Avenue, I was like, just looking at this corner, and this guy who looked like a skin, I had a leather jacket, smoking a cigarette, and I'm behind my friend like this, he says, rape him, rape him, yeah, that's it, rape him, give him AIDS, rape him, and I was oh, like, it was the middle of the day, <laughs> but it really is, yeah. it was like humorous, but it also represented a representative of times, like the fact that he said, yes. yeah, rape him, give him AIDS, rape him, mate, him. Right. <laughs> like you won't hear that sort of like throwaway <laughs> commentary, you know, <laughs> in passing. I mean, it really, when it, when you really think about this neighborhood, I, I, I was stupid, not from 8, 19, when I should have been filming every day. Like you said, it was just everybody overlapping at all times. Yeah. It was constant, like 24 seven of people just living together. And it was, when you think about it, it was relatively calm, maybe because everybody was on heroin, but it was relatively calm considering what it could have been. Yeah. There was and a there, lot of there, crime, there, but. There was a lot of crime. Yeah. And, but there was a lot of uh, creativity. Like yes. Brewing too. Yes. There was a woman who used to wear, um, she used to wear a helmet. Day and night, just a yellow helmet. And she painted beautifully. Yeah. She would have a painting just like on the sidewalk. I never knew it. I knew she was a black woman. She had black arms. <laughs> wow. And she had a, wore a freaking helmet. And she was tall. And she used to paint beautifully and just have it for sale. I wouldn't talk to you. You give her $5, I'll give you a painting. Yeah. I mean, there was characters like that. Yeah. And what happened? The neighbor got expensive. They walked. Right over, right down to right over the Williamsburg Bridge to Williamsburg. All the artists moved to Williamsburg in yeah. like 98, 99. Yeah. That's what happened. Yep. They got priced out, they moved to Williamsburg. And it priced out of there too. And then it priced out of there. But yeah. I'm saying at the time, yeah, 98, right, right. 99, I remember people moving to Williamsburg. And I was from Brooklyn. I was like, well, who would live in Williamsburg? But that was, they knew, you know. 
and they all moved to like the the empty section, the warehouse section, but then it became the neighborhood and then it became priced out of there. I mean, talking about this brings up some memories. Just looking at this, so it's like radically different now. This is where I used to get weed from. This was not a sneaker store, it was a wow. bike store. It was called r, r Bike Store. And you literally walked on a on a sea of bike parts. Like, you, there was no floor. <laughs> it was bike tires and frames. And this guy, there were twin brothers. That, oh my God, there were twin brothers that owned it. And the, the only way you could tell them apart, Colin, one of them had a little baby tail on top of his head. With a little rubber bat, and the other one was fully bald. They were both bald, but he had a little baby tail. Uh, and he used to sell you dimes. You know, then, yeah. and then they got real dirty with it. Like the dimes were like sprayed with Raid. Oh, so we used to, yeah. me and my sister used to smoke and get headaches. Oh. You know, they, you know, it was just a, a very uh, competitive industry. So there was a weed, you know, yeah. dealer every other block, every but, other store. But that's probably what they did to keep the cops. They could put all the bike parts on the floor so when the cops come in, right? They probably had a getaway. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you, you would walk through bike frames. Now why would they spray with raid? I don't. I remember I, I, people treating stuff, but I, yeah. I, I, I once found pubic hair. What looked like pubic oh. hair in my weed. Oh. I, mean, I, just, I, n- I never understood. But let me tell you something. I always smoked it. Of course. <laughs> I always gave it a chance. <laughs> you have to give it a chance. You never know. This could be the magic. <laughs> the magic of missing ingredient. Smoked oregano. I had only seven dollars for my first dime of uh, weed at, at uh, Washington Square Park. No, all, all oregano, yeah. And the guy was like, "I know you guys are young, bro, but you guys need to run when I give you this." And me and my friend, he was on crutches. <laughs> we got oh, through, and he's up, we're up in the way, and I'm running. He's in the cops. I'm like, "Go, go!" I gave him seven dollars for mm-hmm. what was supposed to be ten dollars worth of weed. Right. It was straight oregano. Uh, we didn't know how to roll with like spilling it all over the place, a headache. Oh yeah, no, I smoked regular once. 